Hello there, everyone, and welcome back to Shogun 2 and to the Pike and Shot mod. I should have really been testing this out in like early summer. However, stuff got in the way, and you know, not nothing of that matters right now. Let's go ahead and test it now. This mod is definitely recommended to be playing against human players. The AI does not function in the proper way when using this mod, so that is recommended. And that is why I'm going to launch the Steam group Play with Lord John. So this will be for random videos, random battle videos like this one here, but it will also be for campaign videos. So I'm thinking in terms of how it will work, I will be ready to set up playing a video. I will make a call out in the Steam group, hey, is anyone on with this mod and is ready to play? If no one comes on, well, uh, I will guess I'll play the AI. If someone comes on, great, now I've got the opportunity to actually play a human player. Obviously, when it comes to campaign and drop-in battles, the battle mar the battle has to be like 50-50 for you to be able to invite someone to actually play the other part. So sometimes that might not happen, but yeah, we'll we'll try this anyways and we'll see how good it goes. With that said, I still want to try this one even though I do not have a human player. So we're going to go ahead and start up a custom battle. So let's go ahead and do just that. And so, we have reached the field of a battle, and as it is stated in the manual that comes with the mod, I set it up as uh, it is intended, or as far as I've uh, understood it. So, really what you want to do, now I've ordered them all into one group because it was easiest to move them across the field, closing in with the enemy at the start to do it this way. But now when we're close, we're going to order it into what the intended way is. So we got the command group, or I got actually five of these smaller command groups, which are basically smaller general units. And these should be in to support the sort of larger group within the army which is these groups right here. So we've got two musketeers backed up by a pike regiment and we got five of these. And in terms of, since I'm playing Sweden, we've got the blue brigade, we've got the yellow brigade, we've got uh, the red brigade. We also got the green one. And then out here we've got uh, just people from one of the uh, the areas of Sweden, Västra Götaland. Uh, so we've got those guys set up in one. I have a number of cannons. And then on the flanks I've got uh, cavalry. In this case, uh, Swedish cavalry from another area of Sweden. And then I also have... Uh, let's see. We've got one heavier regiment of cuirassiers. Currently, I haven't played that much. So I'm not, I haven't really figured out what's my best graphical setting because there's so many different models and all these kind of modded stuff. Uh, they recommend that you kind of go through quite a lot of and disable quite a lot of different graphical options uh, just because it, it tends to crash. We also have um, quite a few of these Scottish uh, mercenary regiments that have joined in the ranks there to fill out uh, the troops. Anyways, we're gonna go ahead and set them up here. So obviously I no longer want the uh, general or the command group in the front. Even though at this point they're so close to each other that they're kind of overlapping each other. That, um, say, a unit in the center here Actually, if I select all of them, you can see that the unit in center is actually overlapped by all five of the commanders. So they get a real bloody boost. Um, they also have a number of different um, of these uh, abilities they can use. General's got tons. 
Also, a lot of units got a lot of these different abilities that you can use. We've got fire and advance. We got increased range as well. Number of other ones. Anyways, let's go ahead and see if we can't come to battle, shall we? First things first. Toggle guard mode. That's a given. Let's bring these guys into first brigade, second brigade. Third Brigade, Fourth Brigade, and Fifth Brigade. Cavalry and all the others, they will be on their own. So let's start to move the troops. So the enemy is in a defensive position. You can see the uh, Habsburgs, how they've set up. Kind of a uh, piking shot formation in a way. Um, in the way that they've set pikes here and then all the gunners around on the sides cannons back here. Uh, the armies, I should say, are set up identical, like more or less identical in terms of what we bring. The only difference is I've got smaller four-pounder cannons as my secondary cannons, while the Austrians got six-pounders. So let's start moving up these brigades. Why did... Uh, Oh, I forgot to bring set this one up as a brigade. That's great. Now 5th Brigade is totally out of line with the others. Alright, so we have uh, all the brigades advancing. Ordering forward the cannons as well. And then the cavalry is going to be advancing. Now the enemy's got their cannon set up there, right there, so I'm thinking we're gonna move this cavalry behind this hill, and that'll be good. And then for my general, I obviously had to choose the master, Gustav Adolphus, and I believe he is the one right here with a hat. So there we got Gustav Adolphus. It's a little bit slimmer than uh, what I think he would have been in real life. I guess he went on a diet for this mod. Since he wanted to appear, uh, uh, I guess, no, he wouldn't want to appear thin, actually, for the time period. So we got our uh, army advancing here. I'm sure we're gonna come under artillery barrage pretty soon. Actually, not pretty soon. That's quite a... F I've, I've sent my army quite far away. Uh, from the enemy army. The 12 pounders got quite a bit of range. All the other ones, not so much. And we've got the brigades moving forward here. Take a look at the troops at the, as they're marching forward. Uh, I had Hamilton, Scotsman, but I also think... Let's see. We have another Hamilton. I believe that... I, didn't I? Oh, it must have been in the previous setup that I brought English gunners as well. Without, I guess, I don't know if they, it, it's not really doxing me, but I am actually from Western Jutland, so this is this is like my brigade. If I would have been recruited back in the day as a stupid peasant sent into line, I would have been walking with these guys right here. Um. Let's go ahead and get more detailed plan of where we're sending the different units. Oh, now we're starting to get fire. We've got one of their 12-pounders have opened fire on us. Open out on the 4th Brigade. Let's set the 4th Brigade right there. We'll have the 12-pounder. Maybe I'll... It might be too much to march it up on the hill. The other gun will be right next to it. And then we get the... Uh, Third brigade, right there. Second brigade, closing in right there. And then we've got uh, a fifth, which is out of line with its sort of number ordering. And here we got a first brigade. First brigade is going to close with the fifth. And then we're going to get the 12 pounder out right there. The cavalry is going to move up. And let's see if we can't start uh, returning fire on the enemy. We've lost one guy here, one unfortunate musketeer. Got smashed by a cannonball. I've seen these when they actually hit 
the proper lines in here is is pretty brutal when the cannonball rips through the line because the formations are quite tight, especially on the musketeers. So you kind of you really get the effect which you don't really get in other uh, mods. I want to see if I can set up. Let's not have the. I'll move the general slightly to the side here. Let's see if we can't get see the enemy uh, getting a proper hit. They got a few pikemen up here, but so far the uh, uh, twelve pounder hasn't really striking that well. Now it seems bad right now. The enemy is striking me with cannon shot, and I'm not able to return fire. The thing is, though, as soon as I set up my batteries, all my batteries will be returning fire. While currently he is only one battery returning fire, while the rest of them are silent. Um, I really do want this 12-pounder up on the hill, but at the same time, I don't know if I should uh, wait for that. The thing is, the enemy has spread out their troops, so they're going to flank us pretty hard when they come in from there. And I won't really have the greatest setup for... Um, return fire. The thing is also, so I did one test battle before, the enemy, as soon as you kind of set up your batteries, they will actually start to uh, move to attack you. Okay, so we'll, as we move up the troops here, we will actually end up in a position where all my guns can go ahead and fire. Maybe, you know what? Maybe I should actually move 5th Brigade over to this side. Since uh, we're kind of getting outflanked on that side. And we don't need as much on this side right here. I want to wait then. Because I'm pretty sure they will go ahead and attack as soon as I... Uh, Start to unlimber my cannons. I'm gonna bring these guys a little bit further up. I'm not. I don't think I want to wait for Fifth Brigade to get in position. I just want all the guns to get in position uh, before we open up here. Really nasty shots here. Um, I guess they're really target trying to target Fifth Brigade. It's his marching. Look at that. Look at that. Now he threw a lot of men around. But he's still, like, he's killed a good part of 20 men. So they're getting in some really good hits. However, all the Swedish batteries are now ready. Let's go ahead and return fire. We're going to bring up these also. So if the Karasiers on the Austrian side want to move against us, then uh, we will have cavalry and ready to respond. Let's bring the general over and actually he can support the cavalry on this side. Right. Uh, the brigade, the 5th brigade is uh, continuously marching here and is ready to set up on the hill. At the same time, our guns are ready to respond with the barrage of their own. And the formation of the Habsburgs are now under their own fire. And also, it looks like we're uh, plowing through and even hitting the guns back here. Or uh, the cannonballs are bouncing through and hitting there. Let's uh, have ourselves a little bit of a barrage before we decide to actually move on the enemy. I'm not entirely sure if my guns are aiming for the guns in the back. Or if they are aiming for the formations up front. We've already almost taken 30... Well, we've taken more than 30 men actually out of this. Interesting how they were crawling around like that on the ground. The guys here. Um, we're not doing that great with our battery. The cannibals, they are bouncing though, all over the place. I think they, my guns are actually, in fact, aiming for the enemy guns. Let's go ahead and aim for their formations instead. 5th Brigade, 
finally now ready to go ahead and join the line out here on the side. And we'll see here soon enough that we um, start to advance. There's no rush though. Currently my batteries are tearing up the enemy formations. I took a bit of random troops for the enemy. I didn't take too much of a look at what I gave them. I didn't even know I gave them lances here. The Austrians do have a lot of heavy cavalry. Ooh. Would be nice if I took out some of their guns. I also kind of want them to advance on me. Because then I could use canister with my guns. But I, you know, I could move forward. And my attack could prove not too successful. And uh, then we would fall back on our own lines. You know, I think we've done plenty of firing here. What I want to do is I want to make sure that we've got specific lines to move through. So now 1st Brigade can move in between these two as they're firing. 2nd should be able to move through there. And if you switch to fire on that side there, then 3rd should also be able to advance. Actually with this you know what, we'll bring you with us. We'll bring this four panda with us. And then these three brigades can attack there. And you will kind of move out to hold that side. And then we'll have the cavalry start making their approaches as well. Nasty hits as our brigades are getting hit by the enemy. Maybe I should bring up more of the guns to join the advance on the enemy, or at least the two four-pounders should be brought up. This one on the hill should be able to continue firing throughout this. Um, it's this 12-pounder over here that might not be um, as successful. As we know, we don't need to close in that much. So we can have a little bit more spread as we move forward here. And we can set up for canister work. Firing on the enemy cavalry is probably going to do a lot. Obviously as we move through here, you know, it's easy to tell that the AI is not really uh, an ample opponent. However, um, just listen to that gun sound. I love the gun sounds in this. We're about to listen to these guys if they open up on the air. Listen to the power of that. That is amazing. Let's go ahead and set these guys for canister work. And set them up. I mean, that just sounds awesome. Doesn't it? The enemy is marched up. Oh, they're doing fire in advance. The well, I mean, I talk shit about the AI, but the AI seems to be no, no, to do a little bit anyways. They're doing fire in advance on us. God damn it! But we're about to fire a canister here. Boom! Nasty shot. We force this guys back. They're reforming their lines. We've got the second battery that's coming up here. The enemy is reforming. I want the cavalry now to move up like that. With that, there's no longer a way for this guy to fire, so I'm going to bring him up. Let's see how um, the cavalry works as we've got pikemen moving up to uh, deal with my cavalry regiment here. They should be able to uh, fire pistols. I don't think they hit anyone. 
Yeah, well, they hit the one guy out there, I think. I should actually do... Shouldn't I do my own fire in advance? Okay, so first brigade... Doesn't really have anything to fire at. And... Uh, canister shot doesn't really work for you guys. Let's order the gunners. All of them. Second brigade. Oh, they're spreading out. Oh, the gunners are spreading out so much that they're actually walking into each other. Okay, let's not do uh, fire in advance then, because I think I think it'll be uh, there'll be a risk of them shooting each other possibly, right? We'll just keep for the compact lines. Okay, so when we advance here, charge, charge, double charge abilities brought in as we march in. The pike's charging, we're not going to stand for that. Let's withdraw the cavalry over there. We can continue with fire and advance on these guys. We're just we're testing it out here. Here we can do fire and advance actually. I feel like you can do fire and advance. And then you can move over there. Move the pike unit a little bit forward. You can move these two forward. Fire up the side of this regiment. The gun sounds. I can't get over the gun sounds. It's such an epic sound of it. These guys are about to unload. Hamilton's Scottish Regiment is about to fire on the Italian musketeers. Let's take a look at what happened over here. Oh, my cannon dealt with these guys. We've got another Pike Regiment moving up. Let's bring my cavalry in around. See if they can join in. Maybe it's time to actually put my own bloody uh, pikemen into work here. Alright, so these German light pikemen moving in to deal with my cavalry. Didn't go too well for them. My pike regiment's coming up right behind them. See how that goes. Let's split these two apart a little bit so that they don't actually stand within each other. Oh, we've got an attack going in here. It's a company commander unit that's decided to attack straight on to our musketeers. The enemy pikes were dealt with by our cavalry, and our pikes are pursuing. Though I'm sure they'll be tired quickly. So let's just hold them and have the cavalry move up to deal with the enemy. The king has arrived. He's going to move up here and he's going to go ahead and inspire the yellow brigade here. And I think we're so close. Like next time we'll advance, we'll be right into the. So, we're going to order them back into regular formation. They're just too close. King has arrived. I'm going to put him in between here. Maybe he'll fire his pistols into this fight. Let's see. Maybe it's time for a Crazier charge. We have anything? We've got Hawkbusiers moving in the center there, and we've got a Musketeer Regiment here actually, that we might be looking to fire at. Or the one, the one that's really close right here. When charge, second charge, and. Here comes the heavy cavalry punching through. 
the regiment is quickly overrun. We are matched, though, as the enemy brings in their own. The lances go ahead and strike into each other. And the cavalry fights. Let's go ahead and bring in the graziers. Oh, we are getting overrun here. Form a pike square. And let's have this regiment pull back. Our regiment was overrun. Grazier regiment fighting our two cavalry regiments. Let's also tell these two to hold fire as we move through. Actually, you can move even further back, and then you'll move to canister. We've got another pike formation coming up. Move to canister, if you please. Our graziers getting destroyed out there. I'm going to form a pike square right there. See if that works. Cavalry withdraw as we got pikes coming in. Uh, looks like we were successful in uh, driving the enemy away from there. We've got two command units setting up. Form square and then have the two pike units move back. Please fire canister on the approaching pike unit. Oh, what a nasty shot. And that almost annihilates my entire unit. And then followed up with a pike unit. Unfortunately for them, my two canisters were fired into them and forced them away. But that cannon shot really ripped through my lines. Looks like their uh, right flag is open for the taking. I'm going to bring in my cavalry. It's going to go ahead and attack their center. King is right here. Oh, they're about to attack over here. Where's my pikemen? They're all the way over there. Turn. Move the king to the side. See if you can move back in time to avoid the pikes. Then we'll shoot down the enemy. Let's go ahead and conduct two charges here in the back as the cavalry slays away the enemy formation. The pikes are gone. I'm going to order the cavalry to follow them to hell. And let's go ahead and move forward to support a pike square. We've got the king. It's going to move up. Oh, looks like their entire army is actually broken here. We are victorious. They're all running. So, I, I think pretty good demonstration. Obviously, you're supposed to be playing against human players. The AI does not really cut it when you got these sort of complicated ways of uh, fighting. But I think still pretty good, uh, pretty good showcase, and hopefully you guys get excited to play this with me or just with uh, one of your friends or whoever, because uh, this is a pretty cool mod. Let's go ahead and take a look at the statistics and kind of make some. Uh, predictions or make some assumptions based on who killed what in this battle.
Another glorious victory for our army! I didn't realize I spent 42 minutes in this battle. That's a lot longer than I thought. Um, in terms of armies, we deployed similar amount. One of the advantages of playing the Austrians is that their units are bigger than ours, or at least the Swedish. Like, well, I think when I read through the like the file that came with the installation, it said that Austria, so the Habsburg, one of their one of their like advantages is they have more troops in their units most of the time. So we can see that they, de even though I tried as best as possible picking the same units for both armies, they outnumbered us for about 200 men. Not that that did much for them. Uh, we ended up losing 700-ish men and killing 1,700, almost 1,800. So that's pretty good. Um, and similar losses here for the enemy. Um, as we go to the actual unit statistics, we can see the king actually killed five people. But in terms of who killed the most, it goes down to the cavalry, the Smallands Cavalry Regiment. Obviously, I think most of this is actually riding down fleeing troops. So I think that's why we're seeing these numbers. In, in then, after this, we've got the Yellow Brigade Musketeers. 1630. Oh yeah, I should say there's quite a few different year. I believe there's three different years they're supposed to be anyways. 1620, 1630 and 1640. Sort of three periods of units which kind of mangled together. Obviously this is an early version and it's not really like set up in a super nice way. So that's why I've kind of mixed uh, in, it, in the units all around. Uh, cavalry going around through. Then we can see the cannons coming up here. Uh, four pounder obviously being brought up close. Some canister work. Fires really well. The um, animations there don't seem to be particularly timed correctly. I don't know if that might be something else. But it don't, didn't seem to ti be timed correctly. Um, which was... Uh, which kind of... It was hard to see when they were actually firing. Um, because of the, um, I think it's a different method of how they fired a gun rather than sort of the standard Total War thing when the guy just rubs his two hands at the back of the cannon for a little bit and it goes off. Here so is an actual, um, like stick with whatever. Uh, Hamilton at 100, not a lot of kill or kind of even all around and. I mean, the, there's no unit that really stands out a lot, a lot. It's, except, I guess, this, maybe this yellow musketeers. Since the other musketeer comes down here and it's the Scottish ones. But um, overall, there's, there's nothing really to be said. Like, there's no unit that really kind of pushes through. I wonder, though, if... Because in previous versions, pikemen were really, like useful in sort of just pushing through and gunners couldn't really do much against them so I wonder wonder how that is balanced but obviously I think you learn that the more you play and especially if you play against a human player but there we got it let's not spend any more time here as we've spent 45 42 minutes on the battle this is an suddenly it becomes an hour when I thought I'd do a little showcase Anyways, we've got this done with, and hopefully you guys enjoyed it, and hopefully I'll see you guys for the next one. Bye!